Armageddon Survival Plan, book E. For printed version please contact jar at jar truth dot net. Chapter 9. The birth of Christianity is yet another religion. Dictatorship, communism, and capitalism are all wrong. Jesus was the right way. After Jesus had ascended. Acts 1, verse 9, into a cloud, cloud, question mark. Spaceship. Matthew 17, verse 5, and his soul slash spirit being, Christ, had been released from the son of Mary, and had become his real self again, that is Prince Michael, and had gone home to the morning star, and the disciples had written the New Testament, Satan had to work fast, to find a way to undo all the good work. Satan, therefore, decided to use his most successful weapon, that is religions, and had to find a way to turn the teachings into yet another organized religion. The devil succeeded, and called it Christianity, even after all that Jesus went through, to show that organized religions are wrong, and that they belong to the devil, not God or Christ. It was the counterfeit Jewish religion and their priests, that nailed Jesus onto the cross. Many true racial Jews accepted the new covenant. With the passage of time and the devil's influence, people, as usual, became apathetic, and decided that they could not possibly be like Jesus, because he could walk on water and could do magic tricks, so they stopped striving to be like him. No 12. John 14, verse 12. People decided that, instead of striving to be like Jesus, they would make graven images, of the worthless human animal he had used, even though it is against the Ten Commandments, and make a new organized religion, and just go to church one day a week. That was much easier than striving to live like, and be like, Jesus. They also decided, that they would celebrate his birthday and his crucifixion, and have now made, what they falsely claim was his body's birthday, into a sick joke turning it into an excuse to make money. Some of the evil people, who worship the devil's standard, money, make billions, whilst the others are relatively good, for one day a year, and are bad for all the rest. They believe that because they are what they think is relatively good, on Christ's supposed birthday, which is really a pagan feast day, that that makes everything all right. Do you think that God is stupid, and that you can get away with that? You cannot fool God, he knows everything that you are thinking. You are only fooling yourselves. I came to make every day Christ's day and not one paltry day a year. In any case, it was on April 12th of 7 BC, not December 25th of 1 AD, how could you do that to me? I abhor Christmas, as I told you in the Revelation 2, verse 6 and 15. Christmas day should now be abolished and you should all do what I said, and love each other, and make it like Christ's day, every day, by becoming more like Christ, every day. By giving money and expensive toys and presents to children, instead of giving your time, and love and understanding, the whole year round, you are teaching your children to worship mammon, money, instead of love, God, and they, in their turn, then teach their children and grandchildren and so on, in a vicious circle. Don't deprive your children of your love, and your precious time, by working like lunatics, and almost killing yourselves, to give them money and expensive toys. They do not need money, and they only break their toys. They need love. Give them love, not emotion, and your time and understanding. Teach them love and the God standard, not the gold standard, devil's standard. Mothers must get back into the home, with their children, taking care of them and their needs, and playing with them, instead of working, leaving them alone to play with strangers and expensive toys. How can a child grow up well adjusted and balanced, in surroundings that lack love, and the harmony, that love brings with it? I may as well have stayed at home, and not wasted my time, or suffered the agony of the crucifixion for all the notice that you have taken of me. There are more religions now, than ever before, and the priests teach the breaking of the commandments, idolatry, 
etc., of whom, the Pope is by far the worst. All the priests on this planet think that they are working for God, but they are really working for the devil, by teaching and perpetuating organized religions, and thereby preventing people from having their own direct contact with the Lord. Matthew 23, Hosea 4, verse 9 and Malachi 2, verse 1 and 3. The Catholic cardinals even wear the devil's colors, red, and the others wear black darkness and evil. I have never seen a priest wearing God's colors. I said do not be a priest. Matthew 23, verse 8, and yet the priests are waiting for my second coming, thinking that I am going to come and be their friend. How stupid can they be? I said to the Jewish priests, that they encompassed land and sea to make a convert, and that when they have made a convert, he is then twice as much a child of hell, than the priests themselves. Matthew 23, verse 15. I also said that even the publicans, tax collectors, and prostitutes, would go into the kingdom of God, before the priests. Matthew 21, verse 31. Read all of Matthew 23, and substitute the word priest for rabbi, lawyers for scribes, and politicians for Pharisees. Rabbis, scribes and Pharisees were the priests, lawyers and politicians of that time. On the last day, the Pope, the priests and anyone who teaches organized religion, will be the first into the fire. Matthew 5, verse 19 and 20, Surah 57, verse 27. There is no such thing as a Christian priest, except in your minds. It is not possible for there to be such a thing as a Christian priest. I said that anyone, who believes in me, must not be a priest, or religious teacher. Matthew 23, verse 8, Surah 9, verse 31, and that there is only one teacher. Me. And to call no man upon the earth your father, because you have only one father, God in heaven. Matthew 23, verse 9. How is it possible then, that there are thousands of men on earth, who claim to be something it's impossible to be, that is a Christian priest? Many of them even have the audacity to call themselves father, the worst of whom, by far, is the Pope, who has the supreme audacity to not only call himself father. Matthew 23, verse 9, but the sainted or holy father. That means that he is blasphemously claiming to be God the, Holy, Father. Read 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 3, note well verse 4 then 7 and, Revelation 17, verse 5, and 7 to 9, and 18. Why did the crucifixion have to happen, and what did it mean? The Passover, 1500 BC, foreshadowing the second. The British, Israel, were in Egypt, in slavery under the rule and laws of evil men. The word British is Hebrew and means the people of the covenant, that means, the people Israel of the covenant. The Passover was where the angel of death passed over the houses of the Israelites, and killed the firstborn of Egypt, from every household, including the Pharaoh's, king. It foreshadows the second, because a lamb was sacrificed, and its blood used, to paint over the door of every Israelite house to save them from death, just as the death of the Lamb of God Jesus and his blood, saved the entire nation from death, 1500 years later. The Passover and the Lamb's blood, was the thing that brought about, the end of 400 years of slavery and oppression, under the rules and laws of man, and, freedom under the rule of God, his laws and economics, given to Moses and the British, Israel, people at Sinai. Easter, the second Passover, Wednesday 21st of April 34 AD it was the second Passover, now wrongfully celebrated as Ishtar slash Easter, because the Lamb died, instead of the entire nation, who were under the curse of the law. What curse and why? The law was not a curse but a blessing, to all those who kept it. God's law, not man's, and was a school teacher to bring men to Christ, the headmaster. So what was this curse of the law, that had condemned the entire nation to death? As the British, Israel, left Egypt and slavery, hoping to never become slaves again, rule Britannia, think about the words, you all know them, 
they swore that they would never kneel, to any man, ever again, only to God, who had given them freedom, from the rule of evil men. But, a human's word, and memory, is cheap, and short, and it is the doom of men, that they forget. At Sinai, in Horeb, Moses was given God's laws, statutes, judgments, agricultural and economic policies, so that the British, Israel, could live in prosperity, and freedom from the oppression, that always exists, under men's selfish laws and economic policies. The entire British nation accepted the contract, covenant, that had been made, at first, with Abraham their ancestor, because he did not withhold his only son, the miracle child Isaac, on top of Mount Moriah. Under the covenant, contract, the British swore a solemnly binding oath, that you would keep and do everything, that God had commanded to Moses, forever, and would be God's servant nation, not a master race, his wife, metaphorically, and faithful, and also his demonstration people to the rest of the world. That demonstration, is, to show the rest of the world, how wonderful it is to live under God's laws and economics, as opposed to men's evil systems. Under the terms of the contract, God gave the British, Israel, the land flowing with milk and honey, the milk of human kindness and sweetness, that comes only from the strong. Judges 14, verse 14, the land of Israel. He said that, as long as they kept his ways, and did not commit adultery, unfaithfulness, he would bring the sun and rain, in their seasons, and he would make their crops grow abundantly, and they would want for nothing. They would live in peace and safety, and be happy and prosperous, with no need for crime, as there would be no poverty, and everyone would love and help each other, love thy neighbor as much as you love yourself. The idea behind this, was, so that the Gentile nations, outside of Israel, would see how wonderful it was to live under God's system, and wanted for themselves. They would have two options, and would choose the wrong one first, as humans always do, and that would be, to try to take Israel by force and steal what they had. But, under the covenant, God had promised the British, that he would fight their enemies for them, and defeat them, and that one British man would chase a thousand, and they would flee in terror. So, then, the Gentiles would have to take option two, if you can't beat them, join them, and they would come to the British, Israel, and ask if they could join them. Whereupon, they would be told, yes, if they agreed to keep the covenant too. This was to be the grafting into Israel of the Gentiles, so that, little by little, the borders of Israel would enlarge to take in these Gentile nations, and eventually the whole world would become the kingdom of Israel, and God's kingdom on earth, with justice, freedom, safety and prosperity for everyone, not just for the strong, powerful and rich, like under men's evil laws. However, they broke their promise and the covenant and allowed greedy, selfish, evil people, from amongst their own nation, to make up their own laws, economics and customs, to make the commandments of God of no effect. Because of this going away from God's laws and economic policy, given in the books of Moses, the first five books of the Bible, and turning to man's laws in the Talmud, the people became slaves, again. This time they were not the slaves of foreigners, but of the rich people whom they had allowed to make up laws slash legislation to cheat them and make them poor, and themselves rich, people from within their own nation. So they had broken the contract, and were not giving God's demonstration, as they had promised, and would not be able to help God to bring the Gentiles into the kingdom, as there was nothing worth joining. The system was no better than a Gentile one. The curse then came into force. Under the covenant, there were blessings for keeping the contract, and penalty clauses or curses for breaking the contract. As they had broken the contract, they came under the curse, penalty clause, and that curse was death, for the whole nation. They had already sold themselves back into slavery and poverty, and death was to follow. So, once again, the nation needed to be freed from slavery and death, just as in the Passover in Egypt. 1500 years before. 
as the covenant came into being, because Abraham did not withhold his miracle son Isaac. The only way to save the entire nation from death, was for God to annul, cancel, the contract, and the only way he could do that, was by sacrificing his own miracle son from the virgin birth, unless the nation accepted his son's sovereignty and returned to his laws, and their duty under the old covenant, accepted and signed at Sinai, in Horeb. This they refused to do, so the contract had to be cancelled, and the only way to do that, was for God's son to be sacrificed, instead of the whole nation. The new covenant, contract, testament, then came into existence, for those who wanted life and freedom. It was necessary to sacrifice the lamb, to free the people from slavery, poverty and death under the curse, and under men's evil laws, legislation in the Jewish, Babylonian Talmud, and return them to freedom, under God's perfect laws of liberty, in the Bible, once again, under the new covenant, testament. So it was the second Passover, not Easter, and was at exactly the same time of year. Jesus and the disciples' last supper was the feast of the Passover, and the setting up of the new covenant, testament, under which, if everyone returned to God's laws and ways and serving only him, they could have life and freedom. In order to serve only God, which is the first and most important of the commandments, and to do his will, they would have to learn to communicate with him, so he could teach them how to, be ye perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. If people did this, they would reap the benefit from divine wisdom, love, law and justice, instead of the evil, that comes from the rule of men, who are guided by Satan and his selfish hateful, greedy, unjust and destructive ways. The priests, lawyers and politicians had made up their own laws, in the Talmud, and misled the people, the blind leading the blind, away from God's laws of liberty, true justice and freedom from oppression, into their evil system, which made and kept them all rich and powerful, and allowed them to prey on the people, and steal their share of the wealth, under their homemade unlawful and fraudulent laws. James 5, verse 4, and economics, sound familiar? Ezekiel 34, verse 1, and 10. Therefore the priesthood and false system had to be abolished, and IT was abolished forever, at the crucifixion, to make way for the return to God's rule, ways and the new covenant, under which there was only one priest, the high priest, Christ. Ezekiel 34, verse 10, and 23. At the crucifixion, the temple veil was torn in two, from top to bottom, and totally destroyed. W-H-Y? What was the significance of the veil, that made it so important, that God needed to destroy it, at the crucifixion? For the answer, we have to go back in time, 2000 years, to around 2000 BC, to the time of Abraham and Isaac. God chose Abraham, because he believed and served only God, and no one else, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Abraham was willing to give up the most precious thing, to him, on earth, his miracle son, on Mount Moriah. Remember Mount Moriah? Later, the shepherd boy, King David, asked God if he could build a house, for God to live in. He was answered. Am I a man, that I need a house to live in? I am God and I need no house. I live in the heart and mind, of every man that invites me in to live with him, so I can teach him how to be good, like God. However, because King David had been God's well-beloved servant, God decided to allow David's son, Solomon, to build him a house, temple, on Mount Moriah, where Abraham had taken Isaac to offer him as a sacrifice to God, centuries before. That temple, or church, is the only one that God has ever given man permission to build, and it is Satan and his priests, who blasphemously claim to work for God, who have built all the others, of every denomination. Matthew 6, verse 5 and 6, Surah 7, verse 55 and Surah 9, verse 107 to 109. God does not want a house to live in, he wants to live in your hearts and minds, as a welcome guest, to teach you how to be like him, good. 
the temple, on Mount Moriah, had an outer courtyard and an inner sanctuary, called the Holy of Holies, the most sacred spot on earth, the exact place where Abraham offered up Isaac, and it was known as the Holy Place. This Holy of Holies, was separated, from the outer court of the temple, by the temple veil, curtain. No one was allowed to enter the Holy of Holies, except the high priest, who went in there, to communicate with God. When the high priest of all time. Genesis 14, verse 18 and Psalms 110, verse 4, was crucified, by the Jewish priests, lawyers and politicians, for challenging their authority, and the temple veil to the Holy of Holies was destroyed, this was to show the world, that, from that moment on, the priesthood was abolished, forever, except for Christ himself. Then, through his teachings, of the New Testament, contract, covenant, everyone has direct access to God, if they follow the teachings, exactly as written, and not as misinterpreted and corrupted by Satan's priests, who have the audacity to say they serve Christ, when they do the opposite of what Christ says. Thereby misleading the people away from God, and into believing that God lives in a house, and outside of their hearts, which is the opposite of what God wants. They teach people to sing silly songs, that help no one, instead of teaching Christ's teachings, about how to learn from God, how to make the world a better, fairer and safer place, as they should be doing. Anyone who does, and or teaches, the opposite, of what God says, works for Satan, the opposer, opposite, no matter what they themselves might say. Judge a tree by the fruit it bears. Matthew 7, verse 12 to 23, Sarah 9, verse 31 and 34. Don't listen to what they say, look at what they do. Matthew 23, verse 3. Anyone who has not signed up for the new covenant, in its entirety, is as good as dead, because you are still under the curse, penalty clause, of the old covenant, slavery and death. There is still time, but only just. Read Isaiah 42, verse 7 and my handbook for prisoners, prison officers and governors. HTTP colon slash slash. Jar. Truth. Dot net. Slash. Prison. Dot htm. Or send for a copy. You are all in slavery to the rich, and in poverty, and always have been because you have not kept the covenant, and have allowed evil, selfish people, to make up unlawful laws and economic systems, to cheat you and make you poor, and drive you to crime to survive and feed your families, exactly as God warned you, almost three thousand years ago, by his prophet, to you, Isaiah. Read Isaiah 3, verse 12 to 15 and Isaiah 42, verse 20 to 22 for yourself see what it really says. You can set yourselves and the entire working class free, from poverty and injustice, by keeping the covenant, fighting for the kingdom and justice for all, and for a return to freedom, under God's perfect laws of liberty, and economics, instead of imprisonment, under men's unlawful laws slash legislation and economics. The new covenant is waiting for you to accept it, and to your half, so that God and I can do ours, and it has been waiting, for two thousand years, for you to come to your senses, and open your eyes and ears, and listen to us, and only us. When are you ever going to learn to do as you are told? These people are totally disobedient, and are going against my teachings, so how can they possibly represent me? When are you going to stop listening to people's words about me? and listen to my words and follow my teaching instead, as you should be doing. If you look at my words in the new covenant, you will see the real me, which is totally different from the image, created by listening to words about me, spoken by people who do not know me, even though they say that they do. They are liars, like their father the devil, liar. John 8, verse 35. The Essence and the Disciples called themselves the Covenanters, Nazrim Harbrit, and the early disciples called themselves followers of the Way, not Christians. 
so-called Christian priests, in general, and especially Roman Catholic priests, have caused incalculable harm in the world, by teaching people that God is stupid. They have taught people, that they can be evil all their lives, and as long as these people get one of their priests, and say that they are sorry, on their deathbed, and give money to the church, then everything is all right, and that God will forgive them. Unfortunately, most people believe their stupid evil lies, and do exactly that, which is why the world is so bad, and the churches are so rich, especially the Roman Catholic Church. That is why most of the Catholic countries are so corrupt, because people take bribes, and do wrong all their lives, believing that it doesn't matter, so long as they go to confession, and receive absolution from a priest. Do you really think you can live your life, being willfully evil, thinking it's all right, as long as you say you're sorry, on your deathbed, to a priest, and give money to the church, and that you can fool God? you are the ones who are stupid and being fooled, conned really. You can't fool God, he knows everything you think. Galatians 6, verse 7. What an incredible business, selling forgiveness for sins, and what a confidence trick. Priests cannot forgive your sins, they are conning you for money, protection money. How are they going to protect you from God, when, as far as God is concerned? they do not even exist. Matthew 23, verse 8 and 9? I'm sure the Mafia are all good, question mark, Catholic boys, giving money to the Vatican, which itself is the biggest Mafia on earth. If the Vatican hadn't started their evil protection racket, and conned millions of people, those people would, through fearing God's retribution, be better people today, and the world would be a far better place so it is the Vatican's fault. Revelation 17 and 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 7 to 12. They have also turned people away from my teachings, through their corruption, instead of bringing people to my teachings, by setting a good example. If they had followed my teachings, they would not have driven people to communism and atheism, serving mammon and Satan, giving power to the beast and would not have turned the Muslims against the Christians. You are responsible for your actions and thoughts and words, and only God can forgive you, if you are genuinely sorry. Just because he may forgive you, it doesn't mean that he won't punish you too. So you had better really live a good life. The most misunderstood and misinterpreted teaching in the New Covenant, is the one about the adulterous woman. John 8, verse 3 to 11. The Bible, to which the story has been added later, says that I only forgave the woman, because I could read her thoughts, and knew that she was really sorry, and I trusted her, never to do it again. I did not say that committing adultery was lawful, or that it was all right to do it. Your so called Christian priests have misinterpreted the whole thing, and twisted it, and used it as a license, to commit all the abominations of the earth. Revelation 17, supposedly with my blessing, even though I told sinners to, go and sin no more. John 8, verse 11. I also said that I had come, not to destroy the law, but to fulfill, fully preach, it, and that the law would not change at all, until the end of time. Matthew 5, verse 17 to 20, Malachi 4, verse 4 to 6. Stay away from priests and follow my teachings. How many times do I have to tell you? If a church is really the house of God, then no one has the right to put a lock on the door, never mind lock it. You should not go to church. Matthew 6, verse 5 and 6, go into your closet or bathroom, or anywhere private, and speak to God in thoughts, telepathy, and he will answer you by telepathy, with your good voice, but not words learn the new language, to you. Telepathy. Stop giving money to the church, or hoarding it. Use it to do good in the world, and fight evil with it, yourself, and keep only what you really need. Hoarding money shows a lack of faith in God, and that he will supply all your needs, both spiritual and physical. The Roman Catholic Church is probably the richest organization in the world, in money, land, property, 
shares and jewels. How can they represent God, when they are obscenely rich, and there are millions of people starving to death? Jesus had nothing except his clothes, and taught the sharing of everything, so that there would be no poor, or crime. How can the religions be working for God, when they are teaching the hoarding of gold and money, serving mammon? Isn't it obvious that they are working for the devil? They are hypocrites, just like the scribes, lawyers, and Pharisees, politicians, and they devour widows' houses and say long prayers, for a pretense. Matthew 23, verse 14. They wear silly clothes and revel in salutes in the streets. Two thousand years and nothing has changed. How can someone who is a fellow prisoner in bad, and who is blind to the truth, teach you how to be good? God is the only one who can teach you. Open your eyes. Isaiah 42, verse 16 to 25 The Catholic priests told soldiers to murder in God's name, when God himself says that you must not murder, Ten Commandments. They are not the only priests to do that, as you well know. How can they represent God? All the priests throughout history have been conned by Satan, and have actually been working for him, not for God. Once the devil had created Christianity, he then divided it, into lots of different sects, to make it even more efficient, at dividing and deceiving the world, into believing that organized religions belong to God, just because they use and abuse his name. Revelation 12, verse 9. Jesus taught charity, and the hoarding of nothing material, and giving to the poor, so what excuse can a Christian church have, for hoarding material treasures? They should be setting a good example, by deeds not words, instead of which they are setting a bad example, teaching by their example, the hoarding of worldly treasures. Jesus was the world's first, best and most famous socialist. However, socialism has to be on an individual choice basis, just like talking to God, because, once it becomes an organization, it goes all wrong, just like religion. Remember the rules of the prison, free will, chapter 2. Once socialism becomes organized into a political party, or a government, it becomes a dictatorship and evil. All human dictators are evil, but the most evil is state dictatorship, with walls to keep people in, forcibly. If they don't build walls, the place becomes deserted. Everyone should individually help his neighbors, from personal choice. That person who has a problem could have been one of your grandparents, or great-grandparents. Shouldn't you give them a hand? You cannot force people to be socialists, each individual must have his own free will, to decide, for himself. God gave everyone their own free will, and no man, or men, have the right to take that away. Men have, however, made up their own unlawful laws slash legislation. Isaiah 3, verse 14 and 15 and Isaiah 41, verse 15 and 16 and Isaiah 42, verse 13 to 25, Matthew 15, verse 9, to take away your God-given rights, and now you must fight to get them back. Ephesians 6, verse 10 to 18. The state socialists also work under the devil's colors. The red flag. Capitalism is also wrong but it is not as evil as communism, because at least it allows freedom of choice, to be or not to be a capitalist. It teaches the wrong values, because it teaches the values of the world, materialism, instead of the values of heaven, brotherly love and sharing. However, at least it does not force itself upon people, and you are free to opt out, and or leave. It is probably the lesser of the evils. Jesus taught the way that is individual socialism. If everyone was like Jesus, there would be no need for governments, because everyone would help his neighbors, and soon this planet would be deserted, because everyone would have gone home, I am the way, home, I am how you have to be, to go home. Stay away from priests, with their silly clothes and rituals. Talk to God privately, and listen to him and do his will, and not your own. No self-will only God's will. Do not hoard worldly treasures, serving mammon. Don't exchange your chance to live forever, 
and to go home, for worldly treasures that you cannot keep, and certain death. This world has, and always has had, a perfect government, if only people would listen to it, and help it, by doing what it advises them, instead of always ignoring it, and working against it. If people help the real government, the world would function perfectly. That government is also their king and is God. Malachi 1, verse 14, Surah 114. Unfortunately you are all anarchists, and have set up your own governments and monarchies, in direct disobedience of the first commandment. And him only shall you serve, and they govern in direct conflict with his governing. Matthew 4, verse 10 and Matthew 15, verse 9. Worshipping other evil human plus beings and Satan, and bowing down to them, either physically or spiritually, when God says that all men are created equal, has caused nothing but trouble and wars, since the beginning of time, and you still haven't learned to keep the first commandment. Surah 3, verse 64. Whenever you break a commandment, you automatically bring punishment and suffering upon yourself, divine justice. They are not polite requests. They are not even advice. They are commandments. And they mean exactly what they say. You seem to think that you are good, and free to do as you like, with impunity, and a law unto yourselves, but you are not, and you are gravely mistaken. Isaiah 3, verse 12, Luke 11, verse 52, Surah 96, verse 6 and 7. You talk about democracy and you don't know the meaning of the word, demon crazy. In any case, prisoners on death row do not have the right to make up their own rules, and elect themselves kings and queens, lords, ladies and parliaments, and rule themselves. You can't have kings and queens in prison, and prisoners ruling themselves. Prisons have rules, that the prisoners must follow, and so does this prison planet, and they were given to Moses. Since the day that men started to make up laws, there has been less and less justice. Every time a new law is made up, there is even less justice, until today, under man's laws slash legislation, there is no justice. Isaiah 3, verse 2 to 15. The rich minority make up their own laws slash legislation, to allow themselves to break God's laws and steal from the poor, without going to jail. The poor majority have been conned, into voting for the rich people's laws slash legislation, and can't see that they've been conned, because they have not kept strictly to God's laws, and that these human laws, legislation make them ever poorer and the rich richer. The poor are the majority and are serving the minority rich. What kind of democracy is that? Mass insanity is what it is. Unfortunately the lunatics have taken over the asylum, but will soon be executed for doing so, if they do not repent and keep the law. Limited company law protects the wealthy people's personal belongings, and lets them trade with impunity, whereas the poor man, if he owes them money, loses his shirt and or goes to prison. Where is the justice in that? The rich bankers and insurance companies steal billions of pound, dollar, etc., a day, from the poor and don't go to prison, because of their own homemade laws slash legislation, but, if a man steals a loaf of bread, and I'm not condoning his actions, to feed his hungry family, because the rich people and their unlawful, fraudulent laws slash legislation have made them poor, by fraud, then these rich people put him in prison. Where is the justice in that? Under man's unlawful legislation, the wrong people are in prison. It is the rich who should be in prison, not the poor. There would be no poor, if the rich had not stolen the share of the poor, in the first place, under their unlawful, fraudulent laws slash legislation. Isaiah 3, verse 12 to 15 and Isaiah 42, verse 21 to 25, James 5, verse 4, Sir 83, verse 1 to 6. Therefore the obscenely rich are the real criminals, and the cause of poverty and petty crime, as the poor struggle to survive, under the oppression of man's laws slash legislation. When will the poor learn, that it is no use stealing from other working people? 
they should all get together, and vote for God's laws and economics to be reinstated, and redistribute. Isaiah 42, verse 22, the nation's wealth, back to the poor, that it was stolen from, and make sure it never happens again, by keeping God's laws, and serving only him. Isaiah 42, verse 24. If you keep the covenant and God's ways, laws, economics, etc., there can be no poor. The rich brought out the firearms act, to keep the poor down, and also because it is in their interest to keep crime, with no means of self-defense, because then people need their banks and insurance companies, so that the rich can steal from the poor, instead of ordinary thieves. Banks then, as well as stealing your money, use your own money against you, by lending it to greedy people, who do not really need it, at interest, causing inflation, so they can expand and make takeovers, etc., to put you out of business. Have you ever heard of a bank lending money to anyone who really needs it? You kid yourselves on that you are good, and you are not. Isaiah 5, verse 20. If you are all good, why is the world, mankind, so bad? It's always everyone else isn't it? It's never you, or is it? Jesus said that he was not good. Matthew 19, verse 17, So how can any of you possibly be good? Are you better than he was? Of course not. So how can you possibly think you are good? Matthew 19, verse 17. You don't know the meaning of the word good. Isaiah 64, verse 6. Mankind must revolutionize its definition of the word good, and start to learn the real meaning of the word, from the only person who can teach you, God. Making the world a better place, begins with you. You start by making yourself a better person, and, to do that, you need God to teach you personally. The other thing you must do, is to stop humanizing God. He is not a human. His laws, judgments, commandments, words and teachings are exact, and must be followed exactly. If you do not follow his orders exactly and keep to his rules, then how can you expect him to talk to and teach you? Learning to be good, from him directly, is an exact science, and you have to follow the rules exactly, to be able to learn. He does not make mistakes, and any confusion or mistakes are only in man's misinterpretation, because he has not followed the rules exactly. The commandments mean exactly what they say. You must be born again as your spirit, means exactly that. God is spirit, and you must worship him with your spirit. John 4, verse 24. Unless you are born again as your spirit, how can you worship him with your spirit? Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God, his teaching, as a little child, in childlike trust, he shall not enter therein. Mark 10, verse 15, means exactly that. Go in private and speak to God. Matthew 6, verse 6 and 7, Sura 7, verse 55, means exactly that. Do arms in secret. Matthew 6, verse 1 to 4, means exactly that. All the teachings mean exactly what they say. In the beginning, when man could do nothing, he did not humanize God, and believed that God could do everything, as he, in fact, can. Now that man can do a few simple things, like building missiles and computers, and has let his ego fool him, into thinking that he is really clever, and a law unto himself, he has tried to humanize God, and says to himself, in his stupid arrogance, that if he can not do a thing, and being able to do it is beyond his imagination and comprehension, then God can't possibly do it either. God is not a human, and his power and ability are beyond the comprehension, and imagination, of all of you put together. There is nothing that he cannot do.